Taurus, it's Mary Jo from Enchantress Tarot. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here to do your reading for February 2020. Thanks to everybody who's been with me from the beginning. Everyone who's subscribing now, welcome. So let's see what we have. I'm very direct, I get right to it, okay? I don't like to dawdle or dilly-dally. And I don't sugarcoat things. I guess many of you know that, but let's see what we have for Taurus 2020. Girl, look at this, we got the sun. How beautiful, what a gorgeous card we have. This is a renewed energy. The sun in the tarot is the sun. Okay, like different cards that are mages have a different planet or a sign. But the sun, this is an achievement coming for you. Like, oh my God, maybe you've been waiting for this promotion or this huge raise. And you know, it's been like, sitting on the back burner with these people and you had to like just do all this work and even talk to them about it over and over again and you're waiting and waiting and waiting for the answer this is it this is where they finally have to sit down after dawdling all this time and tell you okay congratulations you got this raise or you got this promotion or we're moving you up to this now it could be within the same company okay or it could be for some of you this is like an ascendance. You're going to a new company. It's a new energy. Because the sun is a renewal of energy. It's a rebirth, okay? It's that life force. It's an all spark. For others of you, it's about a deep celebration within your life. That's a milestone, a great achievement. Maybe you got your PhD um, or your master's or you got your bachelor's. You know, for everyone, it's different. Or you got that certification you've been trying to get, you know, your electrical card or... Um, you know, if you joined a union or you have a vocation or trade, you've made it. And it could also be a celebration in your lifetime. Um, like you've had health problems. Maybe you had cancer or some other debilitating disease. And this is the cure all or the regression. And you're, you're, you're healed from it. And you're feeling renewed and alive. And your body's regenerating and rejuvenative. Now we know with Taurus energy, you know, there it is right there. We, we have a slow moving pace. So things do go very slowly and methodically in your life, Taurus, okay? And I know there are times that you're impatient and you want it to go quicker, but the thing is it's in your nature to have things unfold slowly, like the bull in the paddock, right? He just sits there and he's content there. This is what I want. Um, with the sun shining on you though, Taurus, it's about, it's about celebrating who you are in the way that you do things in your life. Yeah, it might be slow and methodical to others or a little dull and not as exciting, but for you, it is the way you want it to be. And it's about celebrating that about yourself and that you could teach others patience, kindness, dedication. Because with Taurus, you're ruled by Venus and you know Venus is love, it's your value system, things you value in your life. It's about material things, finances. So all these things around you, at this time, the sun is shining on in your life. Now be careful, Taurus, not to overspend because you do love the finer things in life and you do like to spend your money and then afterward you feel guilty. So try to really think things through, weed things out in your life. If you've been given a blessing, donate it to someone else or sell it for a fair price to someone who could use it, clean out the old and let things in. It's literally like opening up the shades and those dark curtains, throw open the windows, let you, you're airing out your house, you're airing out your life, you're letting the sun shine in, put a new fresh coat of paint on something, rejuvenate and regenerate and bring a brightness to it, put your ideas into it to really clean out and let things shine around you. Um, and it's not always about spending a lot of money. It could be about you putting your energy into it that's loving and transforming things. Um, but it could even be some of you might be celebrating like your 50th anniversary or your job gives you a nice um, party. Maybe you're retiring after 30 years or 40 years or even some people are having a celebration of 20 years. This is very celebratory around you, but it's an achievement for you, okay? And just know that right now, this is a renewed energy for you. You're feeling really sparked on this and stoked on this, okay, Taurus? So enjoy this for now. Enjoy that it's your time in the limelight and celebrating you. Really celebrate yourself too, okay? 
see, I can see that there, good. Ooh, look at you, two majors. Now the hanging man has a whole different energy for you, all right? So when we're looking at the hanging man, this is very Neptunian energy, okay? This is Neptune, this is the sun. Neptune is that watery. They like to drink, wine, drugs, alcohol, um, illusion, fantasy, okay? Uh, but it's also about compassion and loving others. Seeing things through rose-colored glasses, you know, it's not always what it is. But with the hanging man, we're looking to surrender and be vulnerable. And, and it could be that um, you've been pushing too hard, you know, with those bull's horns, you know, you're just pushing your head, head down, head down, head down. Maybe right now you could take a break from this celebration and give yourself some much needed love. Surrender yourself, okay? And let, let go for a while. Let God deal with things. Let your guides or angels, the universe. This is about trusting, all right? Because he puts himself into this situation. He's in a state of grace and calm. And this, where this is illumination, this is the light that shines clearly because you walk in the, in the sunlight, the daylight, you can see everything clearly, right? It's right there in the open. With this, it's the light within you, Taurus. This is the, the sun's energy, the light within you, illuminating, trusting in the light within yourself, surrendering the need to be right about things also. Instead, be happy. You don't need to always be in control of everything, Taurus. You don't need to be stubborn about things. Um, it's about lightening up. And maybe with this celebration and this reward, you can do that where before you were stressed and frustrated and confused. And you maybe took it out on people you loved. If you have a wife or a husband or your children and, you know, your energy was draining, you're just angry, like cantankerous about this situation. This is, this is saying just letting it go already to be happy and let the flow come to you. Because whoever this is, whatever this is, a person, place, or thing that's affecting you in your life, um, they're throwing you out of seeing things the way they are. With this card, we want to regain that clarity. This is like going between spirit and the earth. Because when like, you hang upside down, the blood rushes to your head, and you feel like you're going to pass out. But in that kind of in and out, you kind of... Um, start to get visions or feel things in a dream state. That's kind of what this is. This is allowing things to come to you through a surrender and being vulnerable. It's not about being gullible. Vulnerability is a, a softer way of allowing things into your life when you're frail. So if you've been feeling that way, that you can't control anything and you're not getting what you want done or not in the way that you wanted to with this person or this situation or thing, these are the times when you say, you know what, I'm going to trust in my higher self because my emotions are getting in the way or my physical body or my mental capacity is thwarting me from allowing all of this in my life. I got to go within and trust within. Some deep breathing will help. Some contemplation will help. You know, even if you lock yourself away in your man cave or in your she shed for a while. And I know when you have children, you can't even take a bath. They're banging on the door. But whatever time alone that you can have, if you can close your eyes and do some deep cleansing breaths, even three or four at a time, slowly inhale, hold it for seven, eight seconds, slowly exhale it. And in those moments when you can slow down your heart rate and you can clear your mind of the 80,000 things that you're thinking of, that's when your inspired thought and your illuminous inner divination comes in and guides you towards what you need and want in your life. And it's allowing, okay, and clearing the things that are foggy in your life, you know? Like I said, it's like the doctor's office with the E on the chart and the further away you are, you know, you get the, the lines are smaller and smaller. What the visual acuity with that 2020, you could see the distance, the finer details. And that's what we want for you too with the hanging man, but letting it go. Holy crap, look at you, you've got three majors. Death card, wow. Now with the death card, it's not a horrible thing. Yes, for some time it does mean the death of someone in a family or a friend. And if so, my sincerest condolences to you. Um, for they have transitioned into the light. However, with the death card generally, and it does see 12 and 13, uh, that's Scorpio. And I got to tell you, Taurus, Scorpio is your opposing sign. 
all right? Taurus and Scorpio, the polarities. Now you look to Scorpio to embody the highest version of that within yourself as a Tauren, as the Scorpion looks to Taurus to embody the highest version of you and them. So with this, we could say, what is Scorpio? Well, Scorpio is regenerative, rejuvenative, life, death, rebirth, alchemy, taking something from the raw state, like lead and transmuting the energy into gold, the highest, purest form. So with this, it's again about releasing and shedding. Where this is letting go and letting God deal with it, being vulnerable, the death card is saying, I've done that. I've shed off all the old things about me that I don't need, the dead things about me, like a snake with its skin or a frog or a turtle with its shell. And now you're this renewed energy. You know, you've been illuminated here. Again, when you wanna apply this to your life, if it's love or health or money, schooling, anything that's going on in your life. Just listen to what spirit is giving you in the underlying message here, that these are major arcanas that you need to learn. This is about that you are deserving of everything in life and you need to be illuminated and realize that. This is about trusting your higher self, that spirit's always with you and listening to the voice within. And this is about the transmutative energies and properties that you have the power. Okay, that's Scorpio power through your desire, which is Scorpio, to create a new life. Scorpio rules the part of the body that is reproductive organs. So it's life-giving energy, okay? And you can welcome in this new life and shed off the old dead part of yourself that you don't need anymore. You could hang on to it, but it's only gonna hold you back from everything you want in your life with this person, this thing, this situation. And it could be someone that's dead weight in your life that you've been hanging on to, and they're killing you. You're dying more and more every day as you're with this person, but you're hanging on and you don't want to let go because you're feeling compassionate toward them. Well, maybe you're loving them for all the wrong reasons. And all the right reasons for you to be happy and be free are things that you're afraid to face. When the death card comes up, it could be something that just happens like that, that is highly, um, you know, swift through the inner deepest thoughts that you have that you don't realize you're creating an energy around you to transmute this energy and end it into a new life. Aries came up even with the judgment card. So there's gotta be a lot of people that are starting to let go of the dead weight. And with Pluto transitioning the sky with Saturn as it's been, as deeply as it's been, and Saturn's been in Capricorn since 2017, think back to the crap that started happening and then, and look what house it was in for you. And the way they're so close and they keep going retrograde and direct, this is a going back and forth where Saturn is saying to you, I'm breaking it down for you, bro. And Pluto's saying, yeah, well, I'm going to help destroy it, but I'm going to build something new and beautiful. What did you learn from this? See, this is the two powerhouses we got, slow-moving, heavy planets that are kind of like boom, 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 boom in the face for the last couple of years. And these are the, the trials we go through in our life. And you're still here, but what are you learning from this, Taurus? And you can apply it for other things in your life. When you go through something major like this, major growth, major pain or loss or suffering, major gains, you have to always be thankful for it, but say, oh, okay, how did this happen? Why did this happen? When did this happened? And look at the pattern of everything fell into place. What was I thinking at the time? What was going on in my life at the time? Oh, hey, how did I help this along? How did I slow it down? You know, this is what Pluto does. Pluto really, you know, being the ruler uh, with Scorpio really is about diving deep into the depths of ourselves, the secrets that we have within ourselves that we don't like about ourselves, the darker side the occult, which means hidden. And with Scorpio, it dives into what's hidden, the mysteries. It's the great detective of the Zodiac. Well, you need to dive into yourself, Taurus, and see what no longer serves you, what is holding you back, what is a wound set, what is your fear, and what is on the other side of that fear. With the energy and strength and power that Scorpio has to transform things in your life, and you can really move on into something better for yourself. Now the eight of pentacles. Okay, so this is definitely good for you, Taurus. Your pentacle card is about manifesting into this world and working very hard and diligently at it. Maybe you're looking for a new love, a new job, a raise, a bigger house, a new car, healing your body. You see, anything could be there. And these are all the things you want floating in the ethers, right? It's all in the unseen, everything. The pentacles represent everything in this physical world, including your body and the pleasures that money can buy 
But for me, it's always about education, what you're learning, a vocation, a trade. I always add that into it. And look how hard you're working in the midnight hour, in candlelight. But you're not stressed. You're loving this. You're really enjoying. So for some of you starting a new vocation, a trade, or job, or relationship, and you're working very diligently at it, you're really putting a lot of energy of yourself into it. It's very calm, slow, stable energy. Um, and the payoff is there. It's in the unseen. You'll bring it to you. Whether it's love or health, like I said, a job. It's all in the unseen that you can manifest. But doing this with great dedication and devotion, and that's the Tauran way, right? That you really focus on what you're doing, you love what you're doing, and you put yourself into this. Uh, this is Sun in Virgo. So again, we have Sun for illumination and energy, and Virgo is one of your sister brother Earth signs, but Virgo analyzes things and goes long term, right? And wants to see what's going to sustain. Very much Taurus. You want things slow and steady, just keep it status quo. So with this eight energy saying, you're really working hard at this relationship. And I think it's also going to be about transforming yourself. The old Taurus is dying off and this new energy is allowing new things in. When you start to value yourself and saying, I am deserving of this love. I am deserving of the best in life. Let it take the time it needs to come to you. You just busy yourself in life with something else. Put your wishes out to the catalog of the universe and allow that it's coming to you because it loves you. You don't have to harp over it and sit there in an obsessive way and focus on it because that is nervous energy and that's what you'll get back. Instead, putting love into it, knowing it's coming to you and trusting it and surrounding yourself with the loving energy that you have for yourself and others, okay? And that loving energy will resonate. Being grateful for what you have now while you're waiting for all of this to come to you. And it's a good healing too for you. Well, I hope this hel helps you. This is really a heavy hoo -hoo kind of thing. You really got some transformative energy here if you will allow and trust in the universe and your love of yourself also to change things in your life and about yourself, Taurus. And if it doesn't resonate, you can look to your rising sign. So thanks again for watching and subscribing. If you haven't, please do. I hope you guys have a great February. And even though it's Valentine's Day, and if you're single or not with anyone, love yourself, do something nice for yourself because that's where it starts. I'll see you guys next month. And as always, I wish you the best.